Well, hello, boys and girls, and girl boys, girly boys, manly girls, all of you. You're all welcome. Today we're just going to have a good old-fashioned knife ramble like I used to do in the old days. Haven't done this in, God, I don't know how long. But this is a kind of just a video to go over a few knives that I still have a love for that I've had for a long time, some newer knives that I really, really love, a couple things that you haven't seen on my channel yet, but you will be soon, and to talk to you about how I'm going to be updating the channel and what you can do to help me bring in some more amazing content. Uh, you know what, let's just start right there as we're talking about knives. Here's the deal. It is really, really difficult these days to have a channel on YouTube that's dedicated to knives or EDC items or guns because they're all considered by YouTube and their liberal mindset as weapons. Not tools, but weapons. And even if they were just going to be classified as weapons, uh, there's really no reason why we can't talk about them, but they don't want us inciting violence. So what do they do? They demonetize a whole bunch of videos. They demonetize entire channels like we saw happen to Metal Complex just a few weeks ago. And they do little sneaky shitty little things like shadow banning us, hiding our videos. Unless you go search for my videos, a lot of times you can't find me. Even my subscribers are not being alerted when I make new uploads. So it's become rather problematic. And of course, we're not making anywhere near as much in our ad revenue. And let's face it, this is more or less a part-time or full-time job uh, for various different people. I don't upload as often as I used to because, well, I'm too busy making knives. Uh, but it's still very much like a part-time job with the amount of time that I put into each one of these. So here's what I'm going to be doing. I want to get back to the good old days. Remember those days when I would come out here sometimes three times in a week and I would bring out another high-end, beautiful, amazing custom and discuss the amazing features and finishes and work ethic of the maker, all the great things that made that knife so desirable. Another thing that I really enjoyed doing was exposing you guys to newer knife makers that are doing absolutely incredible work but you may not have heard of before you may not have seen their work and once you see how great they are well because they are new and upcoming they have room on their books they can actually take orders you can actually order a knife and get it not be told well it's a three-year wait or my books are closed or you gotta buy on the secondary market for three times the price or buy from a dealer that's got it jacked up it's really a lot of fun for me to expose you guys to makers that are absolutely amazing that may have somehow flown under your radar. So I want to get back to those days. Now those days cost me a hell of a lot of money, but I wasn't a knife maker back then. I made a lot more money. So spending three, four, five, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars in a month uh, to bring out a whole bunch of new beautiful custom knives wasn't that difficult. These days it ain't going to happen. So here's what I'm doing. In the link below, and as you saw in the very beginning of the video, I am reopening my Patreon. I really wasn't doing anything with it before. Um, I had a couple people that were on there, and I, I really do appreciate it, but it wasn't something that I wanted to really push because I didn't feel like I could give back enough to make it worth your while. But here's what I'm going to do. If you think back to when I was really early on, and I was struggling to get to 5,000 subscribers. What did I do? At a time when a lot of other people were making their push to get to a certain number of subscribers, they were giving away a $50 Kershaw or maybe a $100 Spyderco, $150 Benchmade uh, as a prize, as an incentive to get those numbers up. Well, I'm sitting here right around 80,000 subscribers because I haven't done much to grow my channel in the past three years. So it's kind of really grown from 74,000 to 79,000. Uh, it's taken like three years to get there. I'm not on a push to get more subscribers, but what I want to do 
is give you guys something back. When I hit my 5,000 subscriber list, I said I want to do a great giveaway, but I don't want to give away something everybody else can. So I contacted a custom knife maker. At the time, uh, he was very good and very reliable and very awesome. It was Will Moon. And he made a thousand dollar knife for me to give away to one of my subscribers. My subscriber got it. We're still friends to this day on Instagram. He loved that knife. It was an amazing knife. That was before, you know, Will kind of checked out and did whatever it is that he's doing. Um, so I want to get back to doing that again. So think of this more or less as, uh, I don't want to say it's like a lottery, but it kind of is. So I'm only making three tiers for the Patreon. It's nice and simple. $5, $10, and $20 a month. For five bucks a month, you get a chance to win a free knife. I don't mean just a free knife. What I'm doing is this, the, the money that I'm getting from Patreon is going to be ordering high-end, custom, beautiful knives. I'll be out here reviewing them, and every three months, I'm going to give one away. It could be a $500, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 knife. You could be in it for $5 a month and get a chance to win a knife. You're in at $10 a month, the second level, then basically you're going to get two entries per cycle. So you double your chances. And for somebody who wants to donate uh, $20 a month, yours is going to be five times the opportunity. So how does that break down? What do you get out of it? Okay, so let's say I get Ron Best to make me a really gorgeous, amazing $4,000 custom knife. I've got $4,000 sitting in Patreon, just itching to be spent. He makes the knife, I come out here, I review it, and then I say, you know what, I'm going to give this knife away. If you're a Patreon supporter before the date of the video that I'm making, that I'm making the announcement on, that your name's going to go into the pot, or into the hat, or whatever you want to call it. If you're a $5 member, your name goes in there for uh, once per drawing. If you're, a, if you're a $10 member, twice. If you're a $20 member, five times your name goes into that drawing. Now think about this. If I only have 20, 30, 40 Patreons, you have an incredible chance to grow your collection with something mind-boggling, something that perhaps you couldn't justify spending the money on before. Maybe you just couldn't afford. Because listen, this shit gets expensive. So that's going to be my incentive to you. For those of you that just want to become a Patreon supporter because you love my channel, you enjoy what I do, and you want to support me, I absolutely love you, and I think that's great. But I do also want to incentivize and give back. And I think the best way to do that is to give you guys a chance at bitching knives like this. Ah, oh. <laughs> my Soulege Deckard. Absolutely love, love this knife. Now, most of the stuff I'll be doing will be folders, but every now and then, I will do a fixed blade. And every now and then, I will even make a knife, one of my knives, and add it into there as well as an additional bonus. So, some months you'll get a chance to win a knife, some months you'll get a chance to win more than one knife. So, that's it on the Patreon. If you want to go down, it, the link is down below, but it's basically patreon.com slash Jim Skelton Knives. Very simple. That's all there is to it. Now let's get into talking about some knives here. There's a couple things on the table that you haven't seen yet. And I want to start with this little guy right here. Not a knife, but a sweet ass little item that I think a lot of knife guys, gun guys, uh, we would all really appreciate. This is from Mini Cannon Tech. And uh, I've actually got two of these. This is a real functioning, firing, handmade cannon. And I haven't had the opportunity yet, as, and I've had this for an incredibly long time, and I feel bad that I haven't made the video yet. Uh, but I am going to sit down and make the video. We're going to fire it live on the video and let you see it shoot. I mean, th these things are absolutely mind-blowing. It's a cool little thing if you just want to have it as decoration sitting on your desk. But to know that you can actually light this off and shoot somebody across the fucking room. How cool. <laughs> how cool is that? So, yeah, look for a video on the mini Canon Tech. Uh, they've got presentation grade cannons like this one. 
uh, as well as more basic ones that cost a lot less money. And uh, by the way, the gentleman that owns the company that makes these also does make full size, like real, like Civil War friggin' cannons um, that, you know, fire real cannonballs that are real, you know, super giant cannons. So he knows what he's doing and he miniaturized these very, very well. How awesome is that? Handmade, hand finished, just gorgeous. So look for a video on that hopefully sometime soon. I really do need to get that done. Another one you haven't seen here on my channel is this guy. And this is a uh, this is a Microtech Signature Edition Hawk Automatic. The Signature Edition basically just means you're going to get the carbon fiber inlays and the all black blade with the claw logo and it doesn't have a whole bunch of writing on the primary bevel like the Standard Edition does. So like the standard regular ones are like 385 uh, this was either five or five fifty uh, to get the signature edition. I love it. I love how hard it fires. This thing is just nuts. It fires so friggin' hard. And the only reason I really haven't made a video about it is I went to clean the blade one day, and it went from being a nice, beautiful, clean black to this splotchy look, and I'm really not entirely certain how or why. Um, so anyway, I'm going to deal with Microtech on that, get that taken care of, because that is not indicative of their finishes. That's why I didn't want to bring it out of here and have people picking it apart and saying, oh, it's crappy Microtech finishes. No, Microtech, uh, as most people know, um, have very resilient, very strong, very clean finishes. So this is obviously a fluke, and I'm going to get that taken care of. Then I will make a video. And going back to some golden oldies, man, uh... God, I still love this thing. This was the uh, the Jerry Mullen collaboration with Millet Knives back when Millet Knives was making knives. I don't know if they really are anymore. And uh, still love this thing. One of a kind with the duplex grind there. Super slick, super cool. The inlay done with the shredded carbon fiber with the flakes of real gold inside. The gold anodized border around the inlays, the gold anodized titanium backspacer and pocket clip. I don't carry it as often as I used to, uh, but I still do carry it from time to time. I love how lightweight it is for a full-size folder. It just really, it's a comfortable knife. It's easy to carry. Going a little slimmer, Jerry's Mongoose, which I still say to this day is, is probably the best of the lightweight yet full-size, full usable blade titanium folders out there. It's got the inset lock, so you've got the same titanium slabs on both sides with the same honeycomb pattern, and the inset lock is done in there. A little bit nicer than a liner lock, I think. Action is fantastic, as you would expect. And it's just nice and lightweight and easy to carry. This is a great great summertime carry. It's nice and slim. Takes up no room in the pocket. You're wearing loose shorts. Not going to be much of an issue. You guys know I'm a huge Zeba fan. This is the S5 Chess. I'm fairly certain I made a video about this. If I didn't, I will make sure to correct that mistake. He has really gotten creative with his lasers since he got that. There's something about Mike's work. I just... I don't think the man can, can do any wrong. He's so artistic. He's so creative. He's making such gorgeous knives that every new knife that he comes out with, I just fall in love with, and I have to have more and more and more and more and more. You know what I'm tired of seeing more of, though? Oh, my God. Yeah, we're going to go down that rabbit hole. <sighs> Breathe deeply, folks, because this is going to piss some of you off. Front flippers. My God, if every maker isn't coming out with a front flipper, why? Nobody asked. Nobody, I, I don't get it. I don't get the fascination. I don't get why so many people love front flippers. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I've only got two sitting here. This one is, is fantastically made. You'll be seeing a video on this soon. I'm actually getting another knife from this same maker. I'm going to discuss both knives at the same time. 
Um, this is really nice. It's really well made. The finish work is beautiful. I love playing with it. I just hate that it's a front flipper. Here's why. Every knife that I carry, its primary function is to be a tool, right? If I need to cut something, I've got that tool in my pocket at all times. But its secondary use is always going to be backup self-defense device. If for some reason I can't get to one of my guns, if the only thing that's available to me in the moment is the knife in my pocket, I want a knife that's going to come out of my pocket easily. We'll discuss that a little bit later. And then when I grab it, when I've pulled that from the pocket, I've already got a grip on it. I don't want to have to change my grip to open my knife. I can't, I can't hold the knife like I need to hold it because now I have to get my fingers over here, I have to cradle it, and you're not getting a, a good grip. Anybody could knock that right out of your hand or it could just fall out of your hand. You're kind of cradling it, then you've got to bring your thumb up here, do this goofy thing, and you know, only eight times out of ten it's going to open properly. Now I've got it open. Now it's just kind of loose in my hand. Now I've got to re-grip it. No. That's bullshit. That's why I can't stand front flippers. There's, there's no practical application for me to be holding a knife like this in order to open up a front flipper. The South Africans do it well. What they usually do is they'll have the back side of the blade rounded, all of it jimped, and you can actually grab that with your forefinger. If you want to do it with your thumb, you can. If you want to do it with your finger, you can. Then at least you've got the knife braced in your hand like you would with any standard flipper. It's braced in your hand, and it's, it's there. It's, it's not going to get knocked out of your hand. It's not just carelessly cradled in your hand so that you can do that stupid shit. It doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't understand the fascination. And if it's if it's people that they just never, ever, 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 ever look at their pocket knife as being something that they may rely on to use as a, to save their life at some point, then maybe I get why you love it so much. Because it's a novelty. It's different. Maybe you've already got all the flippers. You got, you got a thousand flippers. You got a thousand thumb stud openers. You got a thousand spidey hole openers. You got... Uh, a thousand automatics, you got a thousand button locks, now you just want something new and different. For that reason, I understand, I get it. It's just part of your collecting, and you just want something different. But there's no practical application where that makes any sense whatsoever. To have to turn a knife, gently cradle it, flip the blade open, put it back in your hand, and then start using it. It just doesn't make any sense to me. No, nothing, nothing about that makes sense. So I've had people ask me on occasion, why do you hate front flippers? There! Oh, there! We got it out. It's done. I would rather shove that knife up my ass than rely on it in an emergency situation. And who knows? Uh, the emergency situation could be something jammed up my ass. You never know. You don't know what I'm doing on a Saturday night. Get a couple drinks in me. Notice that this is not a knives and wine video. It's too early in the day to be drinking wine. I can't be running around drunk. I didn't feel like doing a knives and coffee because I feel like somebody else is doing that. So maybe um, you don't know. This could be knives and edibles. And you just I just took it before I turned the camera on. And you don't know. You don't know where this is going to go now, do you? <laughs> oh, you should be scared. But I digress. Let's go into the next topic. What else do we want to talk about here? Uh, a lot of stuff I've been seeing in the Facebook knife groups. Everybody's always talking about sharpening systems. What's the best sharpening system to get? Oh, i got to resharpen all my knives. Listen here. The first thing you should be buying is a damn strop. Not a sharpening system. You don't want to be sitting there taking off material when it's not needed. Is it the very first time that your blade has gone dull? Then no, you do not need to resharpen that blade at all. That's what a strop is for. Strop the blade and bring that edge back. It'll refine the edge, it'll bring the edge back. 
you'll probably strop a knife 10 to 20 times before it stops being effective, before you'll actually need to resharpen a blade. Stop doing it. You're removing material. You're devaluing the knife. There are people out there that when you put your knife up for sale, you make that knife ad, and you say it's it's been resharpened or it does not have the original maker's edge or factory edge or whatever, people will go right by it, or they're going to lowball you even further. You're going to say, I want $650 for this plague doctor, and I put a nice, shiny, mirror, wicked edge edge on there, man. I am so fucking cool. They're going to go, okay, now I'm going to give you $550. There's no way I'm going to give you more money for a, a non-professional edge you did with a consumer grade product I don't know how good your work is I don't know if you screwed up that edge so for God's sake folks learn how to strop and strops are cheap you can get a nice strop for 25 bucks 30 bucks get the right compound bingo you're done strop it a couple of times after you use it very, very, very lightly. Don't overdo it or you can cause the blade to become more dull. Just reach, just touch up that edge a little bit, refine it, and you're done. Now, if you've stropped it and then it's still not cutting, it still feels dull, well then yeah, at that point you do need to resharpen it. But 90% of people that are resharpening their knives don't even need to. They don't use their knives often enough to require that. They're like, well, I mean, I've had this knife for three weeks and I've used it uh, 14 times. It's feeling a little bit dull. I got to resharpen. No, no, strop that bitch. You have barely used that knife. You have not worn through that edge unless it's got some really shitty heat treat. So get yourself a strop. Save yourself the energy. Get yourself a strop. Strop your blades. I guarantee you, 99% of the time, that's all you're ever going to need. Then, after that, once that doesn't work for you anymore, then go and put a new edge on. So remember, you can only put a new edge on so many times, especially on, depends on how the knives are, are, are made. But like I'll use the, the Spartan Harsey for an example. If you look really carefully here, because they're doing sweeping plunges, that edge picks up. Let's see if we can get it to focus. That edge picks up. It doesn't go all the way to the heel of the blade. So the, over time, the more material you take off, you're going to end up making a little recurve right here. Nothing you could do about that. That's what's going to happen. But go look in the Spartan users group and you'll see guys that have had Spartans since they first uh, the, these Harseys since they first came out and their edges don't look like shit because they know to strop them and then maybe at some point they'll have to put a new edge on but nobody's in these came out in what 2006 at this point very few people have even had to resharpen it that often that you started noticing it recurving at all so again, there, there's benefits and there's definitely detriments uh, to doing that. For anybody that hasn't seen these two, these are my prototypes. Been working very hard, getting a lot of collaborations done over the past year. Um, those of you that have not bought one yet, the, the Riot Tibia is out. It's very, very well reviewed. Everybody that's reviewed it has loved it. I've gotten so many messages from people that got theirs that love them, but they're almost sold out. The next in line is going to be folders. It's going to be flippers. This is the advanced tibia. Now, uh, I'm actually changing the handle. We are, we are not doing them as an integral, as they are here. These were going to be titanium integrals with this starburst pattern coming out from the pivot. But it ended up looking a little bit too much like a couple of other maker's knives that we've gone away from this. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running an inset frame with carbon fiber or Timascus inlays. The frame is going to be much slimmer. You're going to see more of the blade when the, when the knife is closed like this. Because what I didn't like 
was that it looked a little bit imbalanced here. The, the handle looked a little bit fat and a little teeny tiny skinny little pocket clip. So we're beefing up the pocket clip, we're sculpting this out and we're slimming this out. It's going to be two sides meeting to a perfect seam here where you, it'll seem like an integral, you won't even notice it. Different pattern, there's going to be a line here, a line here, and a line here, and in between each will be the inlays. I'm not going to discuss just yet who the manufacturer is going to be, but I promise you, you will be excited. You will love this thing when it's all said and done, because I know I sure as hell do. The blade and the grinds will remain the same. It's the same grinds that I do on my custom advanced tibia. We're going to try to make these uh, very, very special, quite unique, unlike anything else that's out there. What else, what else, what else? Pocket clips. Oh my God, people, stop asking for deep carry pocket clips. Why? It makes no sense. 100% of your pocket clip is sticking out over your pocket, regardless of whether it's a deep carry pocket clip or it's not a deep... I don't have any deep carry pocket clips because I despise them because they're stupid. This is probably the deepest one that I have, and you still got that much of the knife sticking out. Folks, the entire clip will always be sticking out. People will see the pocket clip. They will know you're carrying a knife. Whether it's deep carry or not, they're going to see the pocket clip. They're not going to confuse a knife pocket clip for a pen in your pocket. So stop saying that too because you sound like an idiot. If you are in an office environment or some work environment where you're not allowed to carry a knife, then drop the thing in your, all the way in your pocket. But you're not being more discreet by having a deep carry pocket clip. The pocket clip is still 100% fully, completely visible. And everybody knows what it is. And now you're making it harder to get out because you have less material for your hand to grab onto because it's all the way down your fucking pocket. And then you get a better purchase. What are you doing? Well, you're squeezing the pocket clip, making it harder to extract. Stop. Again, there's no practical purpose for a deep carry pocket clip. It's okay to have your own personal preference, but just stop trying to make it sound like it's a much better way and it's more discreet and nobody will know I'm carrying a knife because none of that is true. Everybody will know it's a knife. The entire pocket clip is hanging out. You're not James Bond. You're not fooling anybody. It's not a clever gadget that you're hiding away. It's a friggin' pocket knife, dude. With a pocket clip. Get over it. Alright, I guess I bitched and I've ranted and everything quite enough for one video. Oh, I haven't shown this either. This is the Reich amulet. Look at that booty. Yeah, that, that is a booty, by the way, because those are boobies. See? Boobs. Booty. 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 <laughs> uh, this is a neat little knife. Nice little showpiece. Little, little fun thing. Certainly nothing to be taken seriously, uh, but man, beautiful polish on that blade. One of these days I will get around to making a video on this one, just because it's cool. It's fun. It's funky, it's fresh, it's wild, it's cool. Man. Got half my lunch coming out of my mouth as I'm talking. Or maybe it was a piece of that edible. You don't know. You don't know. All right, boys and girls, my friends, I'm out of here for now. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. I hope, hope some of what I said will resonate with you, and I certainly hope some of you will choose to support me on Patreon because I want to get back to making more videos. I want to make videos all the time, once, twice, three times a week with beautiful exotic stuff and talking about some really awesome makers and also giving you the chance to add maybe a one-of-a-kind handmade custom into your collection that would have never otherwise been able to get in there. So you help out the channel. I help you out. We rub each other's backs. We get a little frisky. You know, you never know what's going to happen at the end of the night after we've been rubbing each other's backs. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm out of here for now, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video.